Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren. I'm the artist behind Potato Art Studios. In this video, I wanted to give a quick mention to my top five unsung art supplies that I enjoy using every single day. So if you're interested in learning what art supplies I use most often and the specific brands that I recommend, just keep on watching. So if you'd like to skip ahead to a specific item, I will have timestamps linked down in the description box. But to start us off, I thought I would mention a ruler. So this is a pretty boring art supply, hence the title of this video. I really, really enjoy the Westcott brand flexible metal rulers. And the reason why these rulers are so great is because they have a cork backing and not all rulers have this backing. I have the Westcott 12 inch and the 18 inch and I will probably order the larger 36 inch. So a Westcott ruler is great because as the text here indicates it's a non-skid ruler. So right now I just have the ruler on my table here and the cork provides some friction so when I'm drawing lines on my paper, especially when I'm trying to set up a drawing for a sketch, and I always use the grid method. So if you're not really sure what I'm talking about when I refer to the grid method, I'll leave a link to a YouTube video I've done in the past where I explain how I basically transfer the information from my photo onto my piece of paper. So an important step is having really crisp straight lines and this ruler is the tool I use every single time I make my grids. So I can't live without this ruler. Talking about the grid method, when I use the grid method, I draw my grids with coal erase pencils. So I have a few colors from the Prismacolor coal erase line. And the reason why I like these pencils in particular is because they are very easy to erase. So the name coal erase <laughs> implies that it's pretty eraser friendly. So the nice thing about these is that you can draw with very light pressure. And so what that means is that I won't leave indentations in my paper as I'm doing my preliminary sketch and grids. And so if you've ever, you know, done a grid drawing before and you press a little bit too hard, the tip of the pencil will actually indent the paper. So that will prevent you from coloring in those areas where you had made your sketch later on. So the coal erase line is really nice because the core is quite soft, so I don't have to press as hard. And the white especially is nice when I'm working on either my black paper drawings or a dark paper. So you can buy these pencils in quite a few different colors. You can buy these also in sets of assorted colors in packs of 12 or 24. I basically stick to these colors so I don't need to buy the packs. Um, but one pencil will run you about a dollar to a dollar twenty-five and I buy mine from Blick. The next item that I use every time I draw is a kneaded eraser. And so kneaded erasers are great if you draw with graphite, color pencil, or even pastel. Um, kneaded erasers are quite nice. And if you haven't seen my basic guide to kneaded erasers, I'll link that below and up in the cards as well. But it's basically just like a tacky rubber, flexible rubber. This is the largest size available at Blick. Blick makes their own line of art supplies. So this large kneaded eraser, which would make for me approximately six, you know, decent size eraser balls. This costs about a dollar. And other brands make them as well. So Prismacolor, Faber-Castell, Generals, they all make their own type of kneaded eraser. I find that Blix one is a little bit more tacky 
than Prismacolor and Faber-Castell, um, but they basically all functionally work the exact same. So the tacky surface will pick up any pigment or pastel that you have on the paper and it will lightly erase that area you applied the kneaded eraser to. So your kneaded eraser doesn't erase an area completely, but it lightens an area. So it's great if you're working like a subtraction method and you're pulling your pigment or your color away from the paper. Kneaded erasers are really great for that. The next item is tape. And <laughs> this also seems really boring because what is so special about this tape and I will tell you that since I've been introduced to artist tape I have never gone without it. When I went to community college we had a course where tape was a part of the kit that you were required to buy and I, I honestly didn't understand what the big deal was but artist tape is basically kind of like masking tape. So artist tape is manufactured to be less tacky than your ordinary scotch tape or magic tape or packing tape. So it's really easy to remove pieces of tape. Artist tape in particular is slightly thicker. So the tape itself is thicker than masking tape. So it's actually much easier to get your fingernail on it and pull it off. And because of the low tack, there's a very low risk of it tearing your drawing. So I work with my easel upright almost at 90 degrees. And so in order to prop my drawing on my board, I will use artist tape to attach the drawing to my board. And because of the low tack, I can easily reposition the drawing to make it easier for me to, to basically work. So I always, always have one roll at my desk at all times. I also always have a backup just in case I run out. Um, when I was taking classes at my community college, I went through two of these rolls because that's how much drawing we were doing. I believe I'm on my fifth roll of tape right now. But one roll of tape, so I'll show you the thickness is only about half an inch. That's the thickness I prefer. It does come in different thicknesses from half an inch to I believe an inch and a half. Um, I'll have the actual options available on the screen here. But one roll will only cost you about five dollars and it's for 60 yards. So it'll last you quite a long time. I would never go without this tape. The last thing I want to mention is a pencil sharpener. So I've gone through a lot of pencil sharpeners in my day. I have tried a lot of brands of pencil sharpeners and I've been disappointed by a lot. So this pencil sharpener in particular is called a double hole brass pencil sharpener and it's from the brand Mobius and Rupert. And so this is pretty hefty. It's basically solid brass, so it feels like you're picking up like a roll of quarters. It's pretty hefty. The reason why I really enjoy this pencil sharpener over a lot of other sharpeners is because of the diameter of the hole. So as the name of the sharpener says, it has two holes. So there's one, which is your standard hole, and there's another on the other side which is for larger pencils. I actually never have a need for this one. Um, so you'll see on the back side, I took out the blade for it and I just wrote down the date I last changed my blade on the smaller hole. This diameter of the hole can sharpen multiple types of pencils. So if you're not familiar with different brands of color pencils, they basically have different diameters, so one pencil sharpener might not work for every single pencil. Um, for example, I would say for color pencils, Prismacolor and Faber-Castell Polychromos are pretty much similar, so you can use the same pencil sharpener. But the thicker pencils, such as Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils, won't fit. For some reason, 
Karen Dosh wants to make their pencils special. So I actually have to buy a second pencil sharpener just for the luminance pencils. But with this one, because of how it's designed, it can sharpen any pencil I own. So I've used it for all of the color pencil brands I have. I've also used it for pastel pencils. And this guy has been a champ. He has done a lot of work. So you don't need to get the exact same model I have. Um, just a single hole model would be perfectly fine. Um, but I enjoyed not having, um, with a single hole model, there is one that's shaped like a barrel and I was afraid of it rolling away and me losing it. So I chose to get the double hole model so it lays flat on my desk. So when you buy a sharpener, chances are they won't sell the blade refills. And I don't know why that's the case, but for Mobis and Rupert, they do. So when I bought this sharpener, I was not able to find the blade refills available at Blick, but I was able to find them on Amazon. So your blade refills come in a pack of 10, I believe, and they come in this little nice plastic case. So you slide the clear cover off and you can pull out a new blade. Having replacement blades is really, really nice. I plan on replacing my blades probably every two months, if not sooner. Um, but just like, you know, having a very sharp razor for your face or your legs, um, it really makes a big difference, especially if you're sharpening fragile items such as pastel pencils. Having a really sharp blade is very critical to not shattering your pencil. I'll leave a link to where you can find these blades down below. So that is the last item. Again, I'll have a link to all of the items I mentioned here and where you can find them down below. This video isn't sponsored by any of the companies. It's just products that I bought with my own money and that I really enjoy using on a daily basis. So if you have a art supply tool or item that you enjoy using frequently, comment down below with what it is. I would love to hear what your favorite art supplies are. If you'd like to check out some of my other videos, I'll have playlists also linked down in the description box. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in my next video.